Cortana, wake me up in 15 minutes. All right, press X to start. There's the fire watch. New game. Empty game. Now I've heard that these first minutes are going to be pretty spoilery, so turn this video off now if you don't want the intro ruined. Otherwise, let's do it, because we're in a bar, apparently. Ah, oh, the 70s. I wasn't born yet. I'd be born in, like, three more years. You see Julia. I do see Julia. Click. She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. Let's be direct. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply, confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh, excuse me just a second. I'm from the old school. I need to invert Y. Oh, thank you. Invert Y axis right there. There we go. I'm in an elevator. Where's my backpack? I hope it's my backpack. I'll go ahead and take that. Where am I going? Down here. Parking lot level G. This must be my truck, my pickup truck bed let's load the gear there we go do it there we go R2 loaded tailgate up you date for over a year she drives you absolutely nuts it's great you move in you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains you two drink beers out on the deck you drink beer just about anywhere life is good Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. You adopt the shepherd and name him Mayhem. <coughs> well, Julia's in love with the undersized beagle. And the name Bucket is adorable. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots, that'd be pretty good. Or one day, why rush? That'd be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Backpack, I'm guessing. Here I am at the 
entrance to the thoroughfare trailhead. What do we got? Two Forks Region Overview. A thoroughfare Basin, Supply Drop, Beartooth Point, Wapiti Meadow, Mule Point, Jonesy Lake, Thunder Canyon, Two Forks Lookout, Ruby River, Cottonwood Creek, Five Mile Creek. All right. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Warning, thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Thoroughfare is a primitive backcountry trail. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. Okay, good. So we've got some smoky bear action here. Let's leave a little note, as you should, like we're here. Oh, can't leave a note. Well, you normally do in national parks, but that's okay. Here's the trailhead. Big puffy clouds, Wyoming woodlands, Shoshone National Forest. Oh, flashing back. 1980, it's a Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad, you ignore her. Yeah, you ignore her. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Uh, let's man up on this decision. <laughs> you look awesome. Woo, this is a primitive trail. That's a trail? Okay. We're getting near sundown. It's looking fiery in here already. Well, it's not exactly sundown, but it's about to tip down below that peak. Oh, we've got another marker here. Two forks. Fire outlook. Eight more miles still. Oh, well, I better get moving. Climb over obstructions. Ugh. Yeah. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. Oh, the cute little beagle. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Beep, beep, bop, dip, dip, dog, Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You just got damn face in. Let's just use our big boy voice. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all th three of you. He runs away. Julie has to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Nineteen eighty four. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, two thousand miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. <laughs> Commute two thousand miles away? Boy, these are both jerky maneuvers. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. Yeah, well. I agree if she commutes back and forth. That's ridiculous. But I 
can't just talk her out of something that she would love to do. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. And she agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine to try and try to forget about it. Well, that's pretty rough. But this is our first episode. We ain't gotta bring professionals into this. Just make some macaroni and drink wine, try to forget about it. And it works. You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. I'm camping. Still at eight miles to go. I guess I didn't make it to where I needed to be yet. Got a journal. Coleman lamp, another Coleman lamp, had some dinner, backpack, sleeping bag over there, under the stars, hi butterfly, all right, we're under a lot of stars, let's go ahead and read this journal, <laughs> that must be a sketch of me, I have her journal, I have Julia's journal. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 1987. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. But she gets worse. 1988, you spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. <clears throat> you decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Yeah, well... Let's take care of her. Let's see how that goes. It's a foggy, cloudy day. Still on the trail. Let's keep it moving. The alder trees are lovely this time of year. Alder's always lovely. Hi, if you see me, I see you. Oh, peace out. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door, or you trust that she sleeps like a rock. All right, let me end this first 15 minutes. <clears throat> 